Hey guys, welcome back to Past Amazing, and today we're gonna to be talking about six common base building mistakes that I see across all town hall levels in Clash of Clans. So basically the goal of this video will be to correct these mistakes. So if you are one of those people that is making these mistakes, you may not even know that it's a bad thing, but my goal is to try to correct that, make your base better, and obviously you'll defend better whether it's in farming or in war. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into this video, but right before I do, as always, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications for all the latest Clash of Clans updates, news, and leaks. And once you subscribe, comment down below saying that you subscribed, and I will be replying to a ton of you guys, and actually even subscribing back to a few of you. So if you want that to happen to you, just go to make sure to do those things. Now without further ado, let's go and get right into this first mistake that I see, which is having all your storages in the core of your base. So for some people, this may seem like a good idea because you're thinking if you have all your storages in the center, all protected by walls and all the defenses, that's the best way to protect your loot. Now this is actually not true, because what happens is that if an attacker gets into the core of your base, because not every base is perfect, someone will end up getting into the core of your base and all your loot will be accessible to the attacker. So let's say the attacker brings some giants or some barge or something, gets into the core of your base, now he can just take all your loot in a single swipe because all your storages are right there in the center, nice and compact, all together, he can just take them all out and boom, there goes all your loot. So that's obviously a bad thing and instead what you want to do in your base is spread out your storages because that way, unless an attacker 3 stars you, which that is very very rare, the attacker is only going to be able to get a few storages at most because everything's spread out, he has to choose one side to attack from and whatever side he does attack from, those are the storages that he's going to get. So most of the time you're only going to lose maybe 30% or up to 50% of your resources, but the rest of your resources stay safe. So think about it this way, would you rather have some guy come in, take all your loot, so maybe like 300k of each, or sacrifice some of your loot, maybe only like 100k of each, but keep the rest of your loot? Think about it that way, and obviously it's going to be better to sacrifice a little bit of your loot so that you can save the rest of your loot. So this is something really important to keep note of in your farming base designs. Never keep all your storages together or all in the core, all in one place. That's a really bad idea. It's going to end up costing you a lot of your loot. Alright, let's move on to the second mistake that I see. This is having multiple layers of walls. Now this is something that maybe some of you don't know about, but wall breakers actually have splash damage, and their splash damage is large enough so that they can break through up to three layers of walls each. So even if you drop like two wall breakers, there's no difference between one layer of walls and three layers of walls because those two wall breakers will be able to break through that triple layer of walls due to their splash damage. So really what is the point of having more than one layer of walls? Even with earthquake spells and jump spells, they can just easily break through these multiple layers of walls. So I really don't see why people would have just like three layers of walls all stacked up on each other. It doesn't make any sense to me. So definitely do not do that in 99% of cases. And if you really do want to have multiple layers of walls, make it so that there's at least one space in between each row of walls. So that way the wall breakers won't be able to use their splash damage and take out more than one layer at a time. Alright, the next mistake that I see, number three, is having compartments for your Teslas. Now this one actually just makes no sense to me. I don't know why there are so many bases on YouTube and online, and I just see so many of these bases, but they literally have compartments for your hidden Teslas. There's a reason the hidden Tesla is called the hidden Tesla. It's supposed to be hidden. It's supposed to surprise attackers and throw them off when a hidden Tesla pops up and it could ruin their whole attack. Now if you have a compartment for your Tesla, that's just contrary to the whole purpose of the Tesla, which is to surprise attackers like I said. Instead, you're basically showing the attacker, hey, this is where my Tesla is, you can now plan for it. So why would you reveal to the attacker basically where your Teslas are? You want to make it surprising. So if you have a compartment there, the attacker knows that it's probably there. 
Instead, what you want to do in your base is put your Teslas in basically random places, try to throw the attacker off. Maybe it's on the outside and the attacker drops some wall breakers and those wall breakers get taken out by a surprise Tesla. That's a really great way to use your hidden Teslas or other ways are like in the core of the base when the attacker is not expecting it. All these are much better usages of the Tesla than just having its own compartment as if it's just another normal defense. That takes away like half the value of the Tesla right there and definitely you should not do that. All right, number four is having one wall around everything in your base. This is probably obvious to most of us, but surprisingly, there are some newer players that just don't understand that much about the game. They put one wall around their entire base. Now today, I'm going to explain to you why this is one of the worst things that you can do. The thing is this may sound great because you think you're protecting every single building in your base, but the problem is, and this is a huge problem, the attacker only has to break through one set of walls before they have access to your entire base. So think about it. If you have one wall around everything, the attacker just drops a couple wall breakers, breaks into your base, and then now they have no more walls that they have to break through. Your entire base is accessible to the attacker now. So now things like Valkyries, things like Giants, and a lot of other troops no longer have to break through walls in your base. They just break in through that first layer, which is super easy, and now their troops can just walk around the entire base without having any more walls to deal with. It's a lot easier to destroy bases when they there are no walls in your way. And another thing I do want to mention is that you don't actually need to protect every single one of your buildings. Useless buildings like the barracks, the laboratory, the army camps, uh, the dark barracks, and all these other just useless buildings that don't have any value, you don't have to protect them. You can just place them on the outside of your base. Inside your base, you can place your defenses, you can place your storages, your town hall, all these more important buildings. But everything else, why do you need to why do you even need to protect them? You're not losing anything if the attacker destroys that building, so you don't need to have them inside your walls. This will hopefully sway people away from using one wall around everything that just does not work and bases are just destroyed really easily that way. Moving on to number 5, a really obvious one hopefully to most of us having an inappropriate base design. Just do not do this. Supercell does not allow this and they will actually ban your account if you do have an inappropriate base design. So what I mean by inappropriate is anything sexual, anything offensive, whether you're spelling out a word with your walls or whether you're putting up an offensive image, anything that Supercell deems offensive or inappropriate or sexual, anything like that, they will actually ban your account. So just do not do this. Stay family friendly, keep your account unbanned, and yeah, this one's pretty simple right here. Number six and the final big mistake that I see is putting spring traps in between non-defensive buildings. So spring traps are best used on defense targeting troops like giants and hog riders because one spring trap can take out up to three giants or three hog riders. That is insane value. Now, as we all know, hog riders and giants both target defenses first. So logically, the best idea is to have our spring traps in between defensive structures because that's where our giants and hog riders are headed. Unfortunately though, I see some base designs online and all over the place which are just very careless about the trap placement. I see spring traps being put in between storages, in between barracks or something, just random locations around the base. And you're basically wasting spring traps right there. Those spring traps could be used to fling off a ton of giants or a ton of hog riders, but instead they're just being wasted on the outside of the base. So definitely make sure your spring traps in your base, whether it's in farming, whether it's in war, they are at least in between two defensive buildings. So for example, in between a cannon and an archer tower, as the giants head to the archer tower from the cannon, they will cross that spring trap. Boom, three giants are flung off the map and that's obviously a good thing for you as the defender. Alright guys, so that is actually going to wrap it up for this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed this one, so definitely go ahead and give this video a like if you did enjoy it. And comment down below if you would like me to do more of these strategy videos where I just discuss the strategy side of Clash of Clans rather than more the entertainment side. So let me know in the comments section. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. I am the number one source for Clash of Clans update leaks. So go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell for all my latest uploads. 
And yeah, until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace out.